nation's capital, two blonde journalists who seek complete world domination. They're funny, they're informative, they're out of control. Ladies and gentlemen, Breaking Beltway with Jessica Chasmar and Catherine Tim. Welcome to the second episode of Breaking Beltway. I'm Kat Timpf. And Jessica Chasmar. Hanging out here Tuesday, 7 p.m. every week. You can hear us at BreakingBeltway.com. Thanks for joining us. We're going to have a pretty fun time today. Uh, we're going to talk about airsoft guns. Uh, we're going to talk about... Guns, pit bulls, Syrians, but, Venezuelans, Chicagoans. Yeah, some, we got we got it all covered today. Great, crazy <laughs> professors saying they want kids to die. We oh, got yeah. a lot of stuff yeah. going on. All right, so what, what did you want to start with? Oh, uh, for the WashingtonTimes.com yesterday, I wrote an article. A seventh grade student in Virginia Beach, he was suspended from school, and actually he's facing expulsion from his school for shooting his friend with an airsoft gun in his front <gasps> yard on Monday. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, an so, airsoft gun. Something that looked like a gun. For, for our listeners out there who don't know what an airsoft gun, it's... It's basically uh, a non-lethal replica that fires plastic pellets, and it, you know, it's it's by way of gas or uh, sp- or uh, compressed gas or spring-driven pistons. Um, so it's basically like getting hit with with uh, air. Right. <laughs> well, well, look, well, look, and, and it's not even like he brought the gun to school. In the airsoft gun to talking school. About private property. Here. Mm-hmm. His front yard. I mean, I remember back in my day, we used to have, like, squirt gun fights at school right. in, like, first grade. Now that would be horrible. Oh, absolutely that would not. Be horrible. Even, even if it's neon-colored, if right. it's plastic, it doesn't matter how fake it looks. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a gun. It could be a Pop-Tart. It could be a Pop-Tart yeah, in the shape of a gun. It, you know, uh, I wrote an article for WashingtonTimes.com not too long ago about a little girl who crumpled up a piece of paper into the shape of a gun. Oh and, and and she was suspended for that. So, you know, things are just crazy out there. But, yeah, he's facing expulsion. And uh, what was it? Possession, handling, and use of a firearm was his reason for being suspended Use of a firearm? Use of a firearm. So is, that's is, on his record um, forever, saying that he had use of a firearm. Well, that's that's the quote from the parents. I don't... Uh, the school has... Right. This, um, actually, wait. No, the school issued a statement um, saying that it was 10 feet from the bus stop. Um, How is the kid supposed to know that? He's just... But, you know, and then parents say that it was 70 yards from the bus stop. I don't, I'm not, you know, entirely sure, but regardless, it was in the front yard. It was his front yard. Regardless of how close to the bus stop it was, it was in his front yard. It did not get on the bus. He left, he left the gun at home. Um, It never made its way onto public property or school property once. Yeah. And, and, and the the police were involved, right? Because somebody called the police saying... People are going to get scared by this kid's fake gun in the front yard. Yeah, a nosy neighbor. A nosy neighbor, actually, this is hysterical. She called the cops from across the street and actually reported these kids playing with the, these airsoft pellets. But she guns. knew that it was a fake gun. Not She's only, reporting them playing with a fake gun. Yeah, not only did she know that it was a fake gun, but one of her kids was playing over there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she said in the 911 call that, uh, you know, I realize that it's not a real gun, but, uh, you know, people might feel uncomfortable. So the cops were called. They didn't press charges, obviously. Right. But um, uh, they found that they were in violation of the code uh, if they weren't exercising reasonable care, which I guess that could mean if, you know, if there's an orange indicator on the gun, that means that it's fake. If he removed the little orange indicator, you know, things like that. You know, how so. old is this kid? Uh, I think he was 13. Yeah, yeah. you know, he, here's the thing. Um, I'm Actually, a, the two kids, two kids were, were suspended. Both? The yeah. one who got shot was suspended? Yeah. <laughs> well, the kids playing, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, this is ridiculous. I mean, I, was there even a bus stop rule? No airsoft guns at the bus stop? I, I, I mean, I don't I really don't. even know where they get that from. But if I, I'm obviously a supporter of freedom in the Second Amendment. Sure. If I weren't, if I were... If I were Piers Morgan, right, I would be humiliated by incidents like this. Absolutely. Because they really completely destroy the legitimacy of the cause. Well, he would be against airsoft guns because they promote, they quote, promote violence or a culture of violence or whatever BS he wants to perpetuate. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, but I mean, it, it, there's obviously a, a problem with gun violence. A lot of us do with mental illness, a lot of us do, you know, I mean, like, there's all these issues, but this doesn't solve anything. No. Two kids playing in their front yard. It doesn't. And it doesn't solve anything when you can't even, you know, when when a kindergartner can't even point his finger at a person and say bang without being suspended. You can't play cops and robbers? Are you serious? Right. I mean, the kids, 
these kids, they, 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 they need some kind of outlet to, to play these games that they're taught when they're kids. I mean, mm. just, just an example. Actually, I wrote a story yesterday. It's unbelievable. You have to see it. There's this video. Uh, they posted it to YouTube, and it's, it apparently shows a group of Syrian children in uh, northeastern al Hasaka province in, uh, I, gosh, I don't even want to try and pronounce it, but it's Rasaline. I'm going <laughs> to pretend yeah, that nobody, that's what it's called. Yeah. Um, a bunch of kids, it shows them taking this little boy out into the middle of the public square or whatever, shouting Allahu Akbar with sticks Pretending like they're 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 sawing this kid's head off because he's an infidel. And actually, I'm gonna play a little clip here of these kids. <laughs> yeah, this is incredibly disturbing. They're saying. Glorify Allah, Allahu Akbar, over and over again. And as they're doing this, these kids are holding this one kid down, apparently an infidel who works for the blah, blah, blah brigade. It said inaudible. In, in, uh, inaudible. Um, so, you know, they're sawing this kid's head off with, you know, pretending that they're sawing this kid's head off with, with a stick. And uh, they're pretending to cut off his limbs and torso while he's screaming. Um, so, you know, that's what, that's what they do over in Syria for, for childhood games. You know, that's what really gets me when anybody suggests, you know, be it McCain or Obama, right. that we're going to be able to do anything by going over there right. and bringing troops into there. Look how young these kids are, and mm -hmm. they're ingrained with, you know, these beliefs that you need to kill people who are infidels. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but a bunch of white people over there are not... There's going to yeah. make it more mad. A bunch of Americans who yeah. they already hate, who they've been taught to hate. These are the same people that their their childhood games are pre pretending to kill. They're going to listen to them. They're, we're going to be able to influence them. Right. I mean, it's the most absurd... I mean, this is not new. This is the kind right. of thing is happening every day. And I don't know how anybody in a position of power could think that we can make any difference, or do anything but just waste our money and time, or even make it worse. Stay out of it. I mean, you know, just the other day, uh, an AFP reporter was uh, um, fired upon by sniper rof rifles in Malula, and uh, a Syrian regime fighter protected him. And and if it were not for that Assad fighter, that AFP reporter would have been murdered by radical Islamists that work for or that are fighting. There's so many different sects, and it's right, so segmented, and there's there's absolutely no way to find out. You know who's fighting for who and why, and they're they're all fragmented and fighting each other. Um, but it, you know, we have no idea who the there are no good guys. That's the problem. There are no good guys, and there's no correct side to take. So let them kill each other off. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, it's just more like that'd be great if there's something we could do. It's very very sad. Sure. But there's nothing we can do. I mean, there's and I'm sad okay things for happening. Helping the refugees. There's I'm not sad, okay for helping the militants. There's sad things happening all over the world, but what are we supposed to do when, you know, like my, okay, like my beloved home hometown of Detroit, Michigan is bankrupt. Right. And so why are we trying to solve all the world's problems? Mm -hmm. You know, not that that's the federal government's responsibility either. I definitely was against the bailout. I think the bailout made everything worse, actually, because it allowed, it didn't, you know, the, the car companies didn't have to change their business model. But I love my city. But, uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it, we have so many problems here, and we have no money, and why do we think we can be superheroes and save the world, especially when this is completely impossible? It's true, and I mean, why bomb Syria when we can bomb North Korea? <laughs> okay, I mean... I, <laughs> Kat, Kat will never agree with me on that. No, I don't want to bomb anybody. Bomb I don't want to bomb anybody. I'm a pro-peace, non-interventionist. <laughs> No, I do not. I do not co-sign with my co-host. I'm wanting to bomb North Korea. But you do tweet. I, I, I saw a tweet. Okay, I want to. You tweeted, I you tweeted that you're glad Syria. that women aren't the president because like, you're so PMS. You wanted to bomb North Korea. Yeah, or something like I that? probably would have hit the button that day. Oh my god. But you know, I want to liberate North Korea. I think that place needs to be democratized the hell out of it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I do. North Korea is really the only one that I would consider. I don't know why. It, it, it's it's one of the biggest humanitarian humanitarian crises crises of our time. I honestly believe that. Uh, but Syria, I honestly feel like it's a lost cause. We really have no uh, no side to take on that fight. Mm -hmm. So, 
with that, we are going to leave you with a childhood favorite. This is Jessica Chasmar's <laughs> selection. This is the Jessica Chasmar selection right here. Hey, don't, don't throw me under the bus there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not what my childhood sounded like. Corn? I was not a corn fan. Well, I went I went through the corn phase. I pretended to I like corn so kids like you would think I was cool, but I didn't actually like it. Oh, you were the poser I, kid! <laughs> I was a poser, but I liked classic punk, okay? I liked the Clash, I liked the Ramones. I wore mm -hmm. safety pins around my neck. It was disgusting. Oh, I did that. It was disgusting. I could have been so pretty, but I decided <laughs> to dress myself up ugly in Hot Topic clothes. And yep. Yeah, yep, definitely. Yep. Definitely went that route. So, um... At Campus Reform, as we've talked about before, we kind of report on a lot of the crazy stuff going on on college campuses. Yeah. This was a really big week for us. Uh, last week, actually, the end of last week, I found a story about a professor at the University of Kansas who tweeted out that um, next time he hopes that, you know, the NRA, in, in response to what happened at the Navy Yard last week, he said, um, the blood is on the hands of the NRA. Next time, let it be your sons and daughters. Shame on you. May God damn you. And that's obviously pretty bad, but it gets worse. I actually talked to him on the phone, called him, and I said, you know, do you regret saying this? Would you like to take this back? And he said, hell no, twice. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. I do not regret saying that. I bet he's regretting that now. I bet he's regretting it now. The story blew up big time. Um, he, he was suspended. All thanks to our very own Cat Timp of Breaking Beltway. Of Breaking Beltway, right. I mean, he was suspended, but it's probably with pay. So it's probably just like a paid vacation. But still, I mean, you can't be saying stuff like that. Is that true? We don't know for sure if he's being paid still? No, we don't know for sure. But, I, I mean, it's, I, if they don't tell you, then I sure. assume that he is being paid. Right. They're basically probably just waiting for it to kind of blow over. But, it's, I mean, people are saying it's free speech, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, okay, Think of this scenario. You are um, the child of an NRA member sitting in his classroom. Right. And you happen to know that your professor had just, you know, tweeted that he hopes that you are the next victim of a mass shooting. It's not exactly the most comfortable classroom environment. Right. And students have a right to freedom of expression. Students have a right to, you know, learn in a classroom that they can feel comfortable expressing their beliefs, and this certainly did not create that situation. Right, and there's a difference between having free speech and being an ambassador for your workplace. And uh, he obviously, he's not doing this to educate, he's doing it to instigate, and uh, that's not his job. Right. You know, and even though it is from his Twitter account, you know, obviously... His students are going to be following him. Uh, his students are going to be, you know, talking to him. They obviously, you know, this isn't, <laughs> you can't be uh, disillusioned into thinking this is the only time he's spoken like this. Exactly. You know, I mean, he's obviously been been talking like this for a long time in a lot of his classes, and I'm sure that, you know, a lot of the students can, can, uh, can, uh, can definitely, um, can attest to that. So his Twitter account also, he includes a link to his bio. Mm -hmm. um, his personal website, which identifies him as a professor at the University of Kansas. So, I mean, it, it's really kind of unbelievable. And this guy's probably, like, advocating himself as, like, you know, pro-peace, guns create violence. It's like, well, what about right. saying that you hope people, people's children it are takes, the victims? It takes some real visceral hatred to say to someone, may God damn you. I can't think of... You know, there are only a few maybe tyrannical dictators out there that I would say that to. I definitely wouldn't say that to the NRA. I mean, so the NRA members, not the NRA, the NRA's children. So right. the only problem that he has with the Navy Yard shooting, well, not the only problem, but one problem, one thing he would like to have changed about is that it was children. Right. I mean, it's just, I So if he could have go back, he would say NRA members? NRA members' children. Unbelievable. He, he didn't say that. He said he, he confirmed NRA members' children. And, 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 and it, like, it wasn't just a heat of the moment tweet. So when he called me, I, or when I called him and I talked to him, I assumed that's what he would say. Right. I assumed he would say he was upset. I did not assume that he would double down on saying that, oh, yeah, 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 I do think that it should have been their children. And you know what? You know why he doubled down? Because he thought he could get away with it. And you know he's been getting away with it. Right. Because you know that, like I said before, this is not the first time he said something about it. So he's been getting away with it, and he didn't think there would be there would be repercussions. And thanks to you, and thanks for this to this story getting out, there are repercussions. Is he's going to have to face them? Right. He's suspended. I mean, we're kind of hoping the whole thing doesn't get blown over. Um, 
everybody, you know, we tell people if they want, if they care about it, to call into the University of Kansas. And we're, we're telling these students, you know, if you're an NRA member's kid, you should maybe file a harassment suit, file a sure. discrimination suit. Because then at least the school's got to look at it. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, I, I can't believe that you would feel, I told him, I, I mean, I was, I'm with the media. And he felt this comfortable sharing that with me. Yeah, he didn't, so. make, he didn't think there would be consequences, I can guarantee it. Yeah, I mean, I identified myself, I identified I my mean, organization. Speak- Honestly, speaking of people who have absolutely no consequences, what was that other story that you just broke today? Uh, today, I, I, I received a tip and I looked into it and it wound up being true. Um, the uni- or the University of Pan Texas, um, or University of Texas Pan American, sorry, uh, the um, the president of. The co- the young Democrats there is a convicted child molester. Make sure make sure you specify it's for the young Democrats and not the actual pre- the president the of president the The president of the young Democrats yeah. at the University of Texas, Pan Austin. I looked into it. Um, it was just like on a little blog, and it actually wound up being true. I looked up his arrest records. Mm-hmm. He was convicted of um, first-degree aggravated sexual assault against a child. According to some newspaper reports, the kid was uh, eight. Um, I'm not sure, according to the arrest records. Eight years old. Oh, my God. Yeah, according to the arrest records, we know that it was first degree. So, uh, so this isn't aggravated. like a, a case of statutory rape. Right, We're this talking is a about child, an eight-year-old right, kid. A child, first degree. And, and um, you know, he spent lo- fewer than three years for it, but he did do time for it. This is the same guy. And we did not receive comment from the school. We haven't received that much attention about it yet. But someone like this should obviously not be a leader of any kind sure. of group. Someone who has sexually assaulted an eight-year-old mm-hmm. so i mean it, 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 it's it's doesn't matter yes he's the president of the young democrats but i don't care what group you're the president of you should be the group of anything you should be the group of anything if you're sexually assaulting a child have have the have the young democrats spoken about this or given nope. a statement nope they have not responded to me however they are i think aware of it because this small blog did something about it and they had a picture of him it's your phone. Someone's texting me. <laughs> I'm so popular. It's not me. It's not my phone. <laughs> um, it, they had a picture of him at an event, like basically trying to recruit people to vote Democratic to turn Texas blue. And um, they took that picture down. <laughs> Good luck with that. Right, right, right. <laughs> they took that picture down, but I still found on his tw- Twitter again um, him tweeting back and forth with the woman that was uh, part of this. I, I forget forget what exactly the name of of the project was um let me look it up it was um well i guess it doesn't matter it was it was a chapter event tweeting about him being the president he battleground texas battleground that was called what it was mm-hmm. called tweeting about him you know being the president and oh he's such a good president and blah blah, blah. he identifies himself as the president so he's definitely the president and his arrest records definitely him i mean there is a, a person so they who, took the photo down so obviously they know that there's some kind of a scandal so obviously they know because this blog contacted them so obviously they know but the photo of him at the event was reposted on like a ut confessions page right. campus reform you can find all of this i mean we kind of are looking for some you know hope uh, help to get the word out here this was not not posted out there too long ago, but still, it's it's something that shouldn't be allowed to go on. Right. I mean, do you want... And what's what's even crazier about it is it took somebody like you finding a story and not somebody within the group of local Democrats to be like, hey, uh, this is kind of messed up. Right, right, yeah. right. And to not to not even try and vet this guy. So there's, I mean... I, I they, mean they just elect this guy as president of their club without vetting him or knowing who he is the, or where he came from or... He was volunteering as some sort of a charter school a few years back and so there was like a little bit of local media about it mm-hmm. they, they would have had to google him to figure and, and, this out and you know progressives are really into you know reform and rehabilitation right, he's a reformed child molester so, i'm not yeah, buying it so there's no maybe, such thing as a reformed child maybe, molester maybe they do know and they just don't care and and they think that he you know whatever he did. He served his time. He's paid his debt to society. Let him lo- loose on you know the campus, whatever. He did maybe lo- that's what they think. I mean, maybe you know. He did a lot less time than some people do for like for selling much, weed. Much less. For like selling weed. Three years. Le- for, fewer than three. For fewer than sexually three. assaulting an eight-year-old. Yeah. Yep. That's insane. 
Yeah. And un- inexcusable. Absolutely yeah. inexcusable. And, uh, yeah, this guy's running the local Democrats. And, you know, the party affiliation has nothing to do with it. Right, this is exactly. Disgusting. It's disgusting. I don't and care if this person is. were to be running any group on any campus, I can imagine that campus reform would vet that person as well because that's not yeah. acceptable on our yeah. campuses. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter. It just so happens that, you know, the title of the group has Democrats mm-hmm. in it. That, that, that's I gotta tell fault. you, the picture of this guy is creepy. Yeah, he's he's very creepy looking. <laughs> his, his Twitter handle, his Twitter handle, we looked it up. Um, post on here, it's Crimson, uh, Crimson Billy. Oh dear. So I, I uh, <laughs> at Crimson Billy. Feel free to also tweet at Crimson Billy yeah, and tell him. Go ahead and tweet, I don't know if it's, tweet Crimson Billy, the sex offender who runs the local Democrat. You can tweet. Yeah, you can. You know, Texas Pan American. Young Dems A T U. TPA is the Young Democrats chapter's Twitter. Tweet at them. They tweeted recently, he's the great president of the Young Dems. Well, yeah, uh, they love him. He's the great child molester president. Yeah. There's no such thing. Chimo. I'm sorry. If you're if you're a Chimo, you do not you do not get to run a campus group. Right. Period. Period. I mean, it, I don't care. He got out in 2006. That's not even that long ago. 2006. He was released in, oh in, in 2006 from jail. And and, and uh, really. Really? Just yeah. a couple years later? Yeah. I mean... I mean, you, he, he served his time, but that should kind of... I mean, yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. And it should be a duty of the local Democrats to vet their president. Yeah, and it should be the duty of them to do something about it now because... Yeah, and now that they know, they're on they're on blast now. And yeah. uh, if they don't do anything, then uh, there's going to be a serious problem because this makes makes uh, that that campus look really bad. It makes the campus look disgusting. And this guy's, like, laughing in their faces. There's a picture on the the post, um, campus reform, from his Facebook on July 31st, and it's him with, like, five kids, you know, oh my God. S- smiling at a restaurant. Oh, my God. So this guy, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know who these kids are, I don't know what the story is, but this guy. Are they young kids? They're young kids. You can see, you can see right there. I mean, you, we had to blur out their faces, so you can't really see how young they are, but... That's why we learn out because they're very young kids. Right. So this guy's clearly seems to be almost laughing in the face of of all of this. He's used a couple different aliases, but like, you know, Billy versus Billy Wayne versus Billy Wayne the third, Billy Wayne Johnson. Mm. So mm-hmm. it's not, you know, I guess that might be able to do something with search engines. But if you look up his arrest records, it's right there. We also have links to the arrest records. You can come look for yourself. You kinda gotta see it to believe it. Yeah. You kind of got to see to believe that this guy is actually still running this campus group, despite the fact that he is a convicted, not just a convicted sex offender. This isn't like urinating in public. Right. This is a first degree right. aggravated sexual assault of a little kid. Yeah. This is disgusting. Yeah. And these are the people we have leading our next, you know, generation or whatever of leaders on our campuses, and we should not stand for that. Now, is it true that he doesn't have to be, he's not employed by the school, he's just the president of the group that's a he's part the of the He's the president school. of the group, right, but... Um, but he's not employed by the school? Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how all of that works. We'll find um, that out, because that's, that's right. a big deal, and we're going to have to hammer University of Texas Pan American if that's the, if that's the case. But here's and the if thing. not, you'll have to go up after the young Democrats. Regardless, regardless of that, I mean, it's a school-sponsored group, so mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. So Absolutely. regardless of whether or not he's receiving a salary, the school is still sponsoring the group and is still sponsoring him as the president. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a campus group, campus activities, they're on campus, they get campus funding. Yeah. So, if you're a student there, you, you probably be really, really angry. And this is, you know, anyone in Texas should be really angry about this. All right, kids, you got it. You're at Crimson Billy, and tweet the heck out of him. Crimson <laughs> Billy. And also, tweet the heck out of the University of Texas Pan American, because that's kind of messed up. Their, their uh, acronym is UTPA. I don't know how you can look that up uh, easier, but, yeah, that's kind of messed up, and we should find out. We should get to the bottom of that. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna bring you another musical break. Bring you another musical break. Can I can I play the the song? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what song to play. I was uh, listening to the song on um, the metro on the way over here, and it was pretty embarrassing. I listened to it like three times in a row. I was really worried that someone could hear me because it's really embarrassing. So been there. We'll have to see what uh, everybody else. Thinks about. Just when you thought that song couldn't possibly be any more flamboyant, you just add a little techno. <laughs> I like it. It goes really good with this Trader Joe's wine that we're drinking right now. Right? Oh, Trader yeah. Joe what wine. What is this anyway? This is a. Uh... 
Nero de Vola. It's crap, is what it is. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. No, I didn't get a twist off. Okay, I didn't get the. I walked right by the two buck. Hey, chuck. twist offs are okay. I walked right by the wine. the three dollar wine, and I sp- I said, you know what? No, you're special. I'm gonna it's get breaking the, beltway. I'm gonna get the five dollar wine. Five dollar I mean, only the five dollar wine for breaking only beltway. Only the finest five dollar wine for breaking beltway. Whatever. I'm on a budget. For those of you who have Trader Joe's, because I had no idea what Trader Joe's was until I moved here. Hmm. It's like cheap Whole Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah. It's actually awesome. I love it. Whole Foods is the most depressing place to go. Whole Foods is horrible. You seriously, you walk out of that place and you just you want to kill yourself. I hate myself. I walk out (laughs) with my cat. Cool. Like you, you got all this organic rice for like fifteen dollars, and you're just gonna eat like eat it, and then you're just gonna go get ice cream after, and it's it's pointless. (laughs) Like it's not like I'm living a healthy lifestyle. Right. Right. If I was living some sort of a healthy lifestyle, it's not only that; it's the people you have to deal with when you go there. Yeah, people who are living a healthy lifestyle. Right. Exactly. (laughs) I don't want to, like, hang out with people. Everyone's gluten-free, this, gluten-free, gluten-free. And nobody even knows what gluten is. Nobody even knows what gluten Like, do you have celiac Seriously, disease? what's the gluten? Probably not. Hey, to ask somebody to explain to you what gluten Why is the next time they're buying gluten-free oh, something. I just feel so much better when I don't Yeah, eat. I don't know. I feel, I feel, I feel rejuvenated and be better. <laughs> so you need a hobby. Yeah. Because, like, if you have time to sit there, you see people, like, they... Instagram while they're gluten free. Hashtag paleo. Hashtag yeah. Oh look clean. what I did. Carb free this. Oh I did. I did. I did fat free Monte Cristos hashtag on French bread. Eat clean. <laughs> hashtag train dirty. Well, the thing is, if you look at Trader Joe's, they have a lot of that stuff too. Like the gluten free cookies, the gluten free brownies, the gluten free. Gluten free bread has got the exact same amount of calories as regular yeah. bread. Yeah. Oh, oh, good for you, pancakes. Oh, yay, healthy, healthy, yeah, French, toast. This healthy French toast. Yeah, just, this is good for you. These are good for you, just, chocolate fudge brownies. Just, <laughs> These will make you skinny. Just because it's got no gluten or has a bunch of fake sugar doesn't mean it's good for These you. These are vegan, non dairy, non gluten, and they'll totally rock your world. They'll change your life. S- side note though, uh, pumpkin pie flavored froyo is coming out. I've heard about Frozen, that. Frozen, you know, because of me on Twitter. Oh, really? Yeah, it's supposed to be out Wednesday. See, that's how incestuous Friday. this is. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I hear about things through, like, I mean, through other people, through other people, through other people who know Cat. I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous. This is how Inside the Beltway works. Everybody knows each other. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. But I've been calling all of the Froyo places in the DMV every morning. Do you have pumpkin pie Froyo yet? Do you have pumpkin pie Froyo yet? Oh, my God. It sounds really good. Yeah, you put in, they have pumpkin pie pieces and whipped cream and the candied walnuts or pecans <gasps> or whatever. That's right. Wednesday. Is it fat-free, sugar-free, gluten-free? It's, it's fat-free, I think. Uh, the yogurt is. But oh. then you put whipped cream on it and pie. I put oh. pie on it. You put pie I, on last it. Last time I got it, I spent $12 on it. I'll have some pumpkin it. pie ice cream with a side of pie. And they weigh it, so, like, that's disgusting that I spent $12. I feel so skinny. Yeah. Freya. So, uh, I'm definitely, I'm excited for that. I'm going to call them again tomorrow. They're going to start to be like, is this the pumpkin pie girl again? <laughs> Everyone on this podcast is going to think I'm so obese they don't see pictures. Like, oh. For those of you who don't know Kat, you will hear me calling her a fatty many times. And it's not because I'm a sizist, but it's because Kat weighs as much as my left hawk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, she's the tiniest person I've ever seen in my life. Mm, food. <laughs> mm, food. <laughs> so you're the, one who, you're the one who wants to talk about pit bulls. Uh, you know, it's not really something that, like, okay, pit bulls. It's something that... I like to provoke people every once in a while. I like to get people all all up in arms, you know, it's kind of my MO. Um, And something that I really like to do is to poke fun at the pit bull owners because for some reason they are really, really, really emotional. And um, they're very (laughs) short-tempered. And um, I don't know, today was just a good day for it, or yesterday, because... Um, three people were attacked by pit bulls all over the country yesterday. A little to- uh, special needs toddler, a two-year-old boy, was ripped to shreds by three pit bulls in someone's home, in a babysitter's home. Also, um, in Queens, a woman was attacked by a pit bull in her friend's home. And then a, a three-year-old boy um, on Monday was at- was attacked by a pit bull in Arkansas. And, you know, one thing that um, I noticed about these three stories from Monday is that they're all, they were all attacks that were done on somebody that was entering the pit bull's territory. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know too much about the breed, but um, 
I have noticed, you know, you know, the statistics are there. And um, they may not have the highest attack rate. I don't know if they do, but they do have the highest kill rate. And 61% of fatalities by dog bites are by pit bulls. And the statistics can't be denied. So, you know, a lot yeah. of times a lot of times this argument that I get into with people is you know, oh, it's the pit bull's fault. Oh, it's the owner's fault. And I don't think that's even a necessary debate. And it's not fruitful. It's the chicken or the egg. What the yeah, problem is well, with the dogs themselves and what to do with them now that they're bred or now that they're in the owner's hands. Right. See, here's the thing. Okay. My family lives in a suburb mm -hmm. of Detroit, right? We don't, we have a neighbor that has a pit bull named Medusa, mm -hmm. which is not necessary in Macomb, Michigan. It's not necessary, okay? And we have a little poodle. We have a little poodle who likes to run around the yard. And before he's gotten, and this is, of course, our fault, you know, gotten off the leash or whatever and gone into the other yard. And we are always horrified right. by this. He's going to get eaten. And it's, you know, well, our question is, is this dog is really, it barks all night. It's e it's vicious. It's a vicious dog. It's bitten, so it's bitten somebody already. It's bitten somebody. Already. And here's the thing. But this, it's a, it's a pit bull, yes. However, the owners of this dog, first of all, it lives outside. It never goes inside. And mm -hmm. this is Michigan. Yeah. These, you can, this is, dogs, this is Michigan. Dogs need to be socialized. This is a, they can't just be Not only that, outside. but it's, a, it's freezing. Mm -hmm. It gets, it gets so cold. Uh, in, in you know, in the Detroit area, it gets freezing in the winter, and this dog sure. is only outside. He's chained up. They've named the dog Medusa, so they're <laughs> really trying, setting it up for failure. Right trying away. to make some sort of evil machine. So I don't know. Like you said, it's like you know, and all, it's a status symbol, I'm like, sure, in Detroit. Oh, like what kind of people are you know out there getting pit bulls? I mean. A, a lot of the times, it is people. I want to be a badass. Yeah, and I yeah. want to get. You want to protect cool. your stuff. Yeah, you protect I want to property. I want to get a cool dog. Yeah. I want to get a badass dog because I'm a badass guy. Like right. you know. Right. So I mean, if those people got any kind of dog, who knows what it right. could be? And then okay, so pit bulls are the most dangerous. Rottweilers are the second most dangerous. People get those, so, you know. But then okay, so what if, if if there's regulations on those two dogs? People are just gonna start getting Doberman pinchers and making them, right. you know. Right. Uh, right, make, exactly. And you know, there's nothing naming a Medusa. There's nothing really to prove whether it is the chicken or the egg. And right. you know, there's so many different dogs when they're in that pack mentality, it doesn't matter what kind of a dog they are. I watched a black Labrador rip apart my 17-year-old cat. Oh, okay? no. We're talking how are you still... How are you <laughs> here with me today? We're talking I about a black lab. And black labs are friendly oh. dogs. They're, you know, you would never... You don't really see that in the news, you know? But this is a a dog that had escaped from its home and was with another dog. And it's that pack mentality. They were roaming the streets and they saw something and they attacked it. And, you know, that's any dog. I'm not saying this is just about pit bulls, but you cannot deny that these dogs attack with the most veracity. Right, but you can also not deny that a lot of the people have pit bulls. Not everybody. I have a lot of family with pit bulls. I know you do too. A lot of people that get pit bulls are people that get dogs that they want to be killing machines. Like, mm -hmm. well, my grandma actually sure. lives, like, in the city of Detroit. Lots of people have these dogs because they want the dog to tear apart whoever comes in the door. Absolutely. The dog doesn't know. To protect and they their drugs, their guns, right, their, you know. Right. And that is the case not always, of course. There's in always, Detroit. But in a lot of places, yeah, including Detroit. In a lot Detroit, of the major cities. It's, it, it is the case. And they're, they're meant to be killing machines. So I don't know what was the, the case with this last, uh, you know, as much as what is this, um, bad, bad, badrap.org. They show pictures of the pit bull with the old lady. Uh -huh. I'm sure that's the case, too. And I hate regulations, man. Absolutely. I hate, like, too. any kind of absolutely. government regulations. I don't want government regulating dogs. But, you know, people, I I, abs I couldn't agree more. And, and but, you know, if, if they want to hammer guns so badly, and these are inanimate objects that are in the, the full use of its owner, then, you know, then these, the owners of this child, this two-year-old toddler that was ripped to shreds at the babysitter's house that housed three pit bulls inside of the home, I think that that babysitter and the parents need to be probed, absolutely, and investigated and, and, and charged if they need to be. Who are they putting their two-year-old special needs child into a home with three pit bulls? Why do you need three pit bulls, man?
inside Riding of the house. Inside man. of the house. Not only were they inside of the house, there were also four other siblings Dude. inside of that house. Dude. You're talking about a chaotic situation. And um, I honestly, I think this is criminal negligence. I can't look at it in any other way. And, you know, it, uh, it's yeah. not even going against pit bulls. All I did was post this story. That's all I did. And it turned into this huge fight over pit bulls and the breeds and the owners and this and that and this and that and the other. And then I, you know, I, I gave some evidence of other pit bull attacks just today. Two other attacks on other sides of the country. I don't know if it's the breed. I don't know enough about the breed. I'm not a vet. I don't know, you know, but it's something to be looked at. And when you see this happening over and over and over again, 60% of fatalities, you know, who knows? Something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. Whether, whether you know, we need to regulate that they have to be trained or whether... Yeah, but you don't um, want that. Okay, and the slippery slope argument is a slippery slope I know, because I hate I the know. slippery I slope argument. I hate it. it's stupid. But, you know, you don't want the government, once it gets to regulate pit bulls and it can regulate your dogs, it can regulate... I know, and that's oh, why yeah. I'm having such a hard time with it. But it's like, why are these toddlers... I mean, all the time. Just this year, there have been 18 deaths and 15 of them were by pit bulls. This year. So, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't you, want to regulate them you, either. You don't, want any, you don't want any gun regulations, though. And I do want gun regulations, just not... Well, not... Well, right. I don't mean... Not new. Gun reg- I don't mean <laughs> new gun new regulations. Gun I don't mean I, I can go outside of the regulated. vending machine and buy an assault yeah. rifle. That's not what I meant. I, I do think that guns should be regulated to an extent. Not right. even not even the extent that they are now. I think it's ridiculous. But I do think that they should be regulated to an extent. And, you know, and, and also with these pit bulls, they have been regulated in many different cities. And uh, it hasn't really proven fruitful. So uh, I don't even know if that's the the situation. I mean, well, to be honest, how many times do you hear, "Oh, my pit bull"? Like I hear it's a the lot. The best a dog lot. ever. My pit bull, and also, oh, like, I, oh my gosh, if I had a dollar for every time I saw a free pit bull puppy sign in Detroit. Oh my god, there's because all they that's don't all there and are. Spam. It's like you want a free pit bull puppy. You want a free pit bull puppy. You want a free. P- yeah. I mean, maybe that's got something to do with it too. It's just like these. Pu- oh my gosh. And Detroit, Detroit, Detroit is puppy. a very unique situation too because it just went bankrupt, and there's so there many are stray dogs, dogs everywhere. There are dogs, and you know. Everywhere. Most of them are going to be those status symbols of right. toughness. Right, 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 right. And uh, that makes them all the more dangerous because they're roaming the streets in packs and they're living in houses on their own, unmitigated. Yeah, it, that, and, and, and the truth houses is, with groups of pit bulls and the sadness is, is they need to be exterminated. Yeah. They have to be, yeah. and that's that's the sad part of it. But they need to be. And that brings us to our next song that is dog centric. <laughs> this is. Atomic Dog by George Clinton, maybe. <laughs> A Jessica Chesmar selection. <laughs> yeah, so George Bush is back in the news. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he um, he hit back at conservatives today who criticized the president for his frequent golf outings in the mid of an economic crisis. Good. I mean, there's always a crisis. I mean, let the dude, yeah. Yeah, and 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 that's what that's what Bush said. He was basically just like you know, give the guy a break. You know, there's a lot of pressure. He's got to get out there and do something. And unfortunately, you know, he's in the public eye constantly. Uh, well, maybe not. Unfortunately, <laughs> that was a that's slip. A good thing. But um, yeah, you know, Bush. Shortly after we invaded Iraq, he stopped doing that. He stopped. He stopped doing uh, the public golf outings, and it was because he wanted to be tasteful and. And uh, actually, a quote from him is, I don't want some mom who's so- whose son may have recently died to see the commander-in-chief playing golf. And I think that's a pretty classy statement. And, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not really faulting Obama for playing golf. But I do think that he kind of, um, you know, when he, when he spent that lavish vac- vacation up in Martha's Vineyard not too long ago, you know, while we're dealing with all this serious stuff. And uh, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Bush still during that time did some leisurely activities, of Mm -hmm. course. I mean, I think that it's so stupid, basically, when conservatives focus on that. Oh, yeah. When there are, because it makes conservatives look ridiculous. It makes it look petty. Meanwhile, we have, you know, him illegally going through our email, right. and we're like, Dave plays golf too much. <laughs> Look at him playing golf again. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Now nobody listening to anything you say. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Because 
because they hear, oh, you're the same person who doesn't want him to play golf, you don't want yeah. to give him a break. There's... And it's not that it doesn't carry any weight, it's just that that rhetoric is dead now. I mean, move on to something different. I mean, I blast him for something that's that's actually legitimate. It was fun to make fun of him for playing golf for a little bit, but come yeah. on. The only There's thing I'm not sure of him playing on. golf is concerned yeah. being like, do you do play golf? I think, I think just, you know, why this was even brought up was just because some people feel like he's putting it in our faces, you know, he's out... You know, having a grand old time while we're all suffering and, you know, pinching our wallets or whatever. But, you know, I I don't think it's... I don't think it's... Everybody everybody needs some kind of an outlet. Everybody needs some kind of a vice. Not, not even a vice. I mean, that I was see the wrong the point. word. I see the point. <laughs> I see the point, especially since he's always attacking, you know, people for having money. And, mm. oh, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just like you. Like, no, you're not. You're not like me, okay? No. You're not no. like me at all. I had a Luna bar for dinner. What'd you have for dinner? <laughs> Probably not that. Right. My dinner cost 99 cents. Probably not yours. Yeah, we're drinking 4 dollars you, you probably did not drink Trader Joe wine and have a Luna bar. And yeah. that's okay. You're the president. Yeah. Like, you're the... You're but also not kicking... Don't pretend like you're an average Joe and you're on my level. Right. You're not on my level. Like, you didn't take public trans but transit, you know, and, and eat your Luna bar. And no, you didn't. You were around, you know, getting show around Air Force One. But, and that's fun. Like, you're the president. You don't need to be, you know, tweeting Magic Johnson, retweeting Magic Johnson about Obamacare a couple weeks ago. He was like, <gasps> "What?" Magic Johnson tweeted something about Obamacare, and he like retweeted it like some basketball pun, and then tweeted it out. It's like we get it, Obama. You're the cool guy. Oh You're my so god! Cool. It's like it's just like crazy. He's like treating it like it's like a student council, and he's trying yeah. to be the coolest kid in school on the student yeah. council. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote an article in, when I was, uh, in 2006, I think it was, and, um, it was, it ended like that. It was like, I'm sorry, but stop making us pay for you being a nerd in high school, because it really, yeah. it really feels like it was when he went on that apology tour and all that, like when he first became president in 2008, I guess I mean, was it was after I mean, that. But, um, you know, it's exactly it. It's like he's trying to appease everybody and make them like him. You know, I'm the coolest guy ever. And yeah, I'm gonna my my wife's gonna be on the cover of Vogue, and I'm gonna be on the cover of Rolling Stone with my jacket yeah. slung over my shoulder. They're the most unexposed couple on the planet, right? Yeah, right. I, I, <laughs> I never see Michelle. I never see Barack ever. And the most overrated arms I've ever heard of in my life. What are so great about her arms? I prefer I don't my chicken it. arms. I prefer my SpongeBob arms. In oh. case you guys don't understand what we talk about when it comes to SpongeBob arms, those are Cat Timp's arms. We call them SpongeBob. <laughs> arms. I have about enough muscle to lift my arm and, <laughs> and, and put it back down. One of my coworkers was giving me so much crap. We like hosted this picnic or whatever, 4th of July, and someone was like, hey, Kat, can you uh, hand me those clipboards real quick? And I look back and they're like, no, 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 don't do it. They just, you just made her burn a calorie. You just made her burn a calorie. It's true. She, she, looks like an, she looks like she's an Auschwitz. That's not very nice. I know. It's not very nice. But you're Polish. I have to. Right. That's what makes it less nice. I know. I only make fun of you because you're Polish. <laughs> I am so proud of being Polish. Polish people know how to party. I have a t-shirt that says Hey, that. man, you guys know how to eat, too. We do, man. I love starches. I also wanted to talk about this one jerk face. I can't say the other word because I really want to say it because this guy is a real <laughs> family friendly. He show. really is because I mean, okay, this pro this pro football player used to uh, be a offensive or was it defensive? It doesn't matter. Tackle for the St. Louis Rams. Yeah, he's not signed anymore, but apparently uh, he took to Twitter today because he doesn't think that military members have any skills. He thinks that he's more skilled than uh, those in the military. He responded to a tweet that said, "Quote." Hard to believe that a player in a helmet defending a football makes more money than a soldier in a helmet defending his country. And Mr. Atayo Tai Neshki? I have no idea how to pronounce it, but he used to work for the, Do for, uh, the Dodge Rams. <laughs> the, St. <laughs> the St. Louis Rams. Uh, yeah, it's that wine that we're the Trader Jones wine. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, I still have a half a glass. Is yours gone? Um, but yeah, he... He basically said that it doesn't take much skill to kill someone. That's what he tweeted to this guy. Yeah. So basically what he's that's saying disgusting. is that it doesn't take much skill to kill somebody. Right, that's so. disgusting. I mean, okay, what about, like, emotional fortitude? I mean, right? obviously as scary as it might be to lose a game, probably a lot more scary to lose your life. So, you know, you know, even if you live, you, you have post-traumatic stress is a huge thing. Yeah, I'm sure I, it take it took a whole lot of skills for you to tweet that from your Twitter account. I think it's kind of ridiculous. And, and, of course, a lot of people, um, 
weren't very happy with that, <laughs> obviously, and were demanding an apology. And um, and one guy said uh, the epitome of ignorance and retweeted him, and he said, uh, the football player, he said, you must be in the military, huh? Like a tongue-in-cheek kind of... Um, huh. Yeah, you must be in the military, huh? Like it's a like it's a denigrate, like it's an insult, you know. Like you must be in the military. You're you're a, you're a born a natural born killer kind of thing is what he's saying. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, um, I I don't know what what is he trying to what are you trying to do by talking crap on the military? What do you think that's gonna get you? <laughs> right? Right. Because you're irrelevant. And you is know what? He's irrelevant? Really, you know what really makes me angry is this guy is an unsigned free agent in the NFL, right? Right. Like, and he has a verified Twitter account. I with know. His I want 200, to that. He has two hundred followers. Everybody out there, please make fake Twitter accounts of me. I mean, really? And try to destroy my life. How is it? How is it? I mean, well, not destroy my life, but make t- fake Twitter accounts, being like, "My suck." I've had several people try to imitate me, and they get they get shut down very quickly. Um, but they try to actually imitate. I know me. I have a fake Facebook uh, person, mm-hmm. and their birthday's in like February something. And every single year in February, some of my idiot because they've added a lot of my friends. Oh, some of my idiot friends are like happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday. So always like post something like I appreciate it. See, I think there's but, there's a couple of people out there. I think it's the same couple of people that are that are imitating me constantly because they're they're accounts that are created and they get shut down quickly. Yeah. Um, but you know, this one's I have going. I have a hundred thousand followers on Twitter. There should be a certain point where I should be verified when I'm working for a legitimate national news organization. I have a hundred thousand Twitter followers and I'm a a public citizen. I mean, at what point should I have a verified Twitter account so people that people know that it's me? I mean, I have people named Jessica Chasmar. There are, you know, I've, ch- I've done searches, Google searches. There are no other Jessica Chasmars, and they're tweeting stuff from me. So it becomes a problem. But um, this guy with 200, uh, he's... Okay, I have, first of all, I have almost 2,000, so I'm going to need some more followers. Yeah, uh, KC Timpf. Yeah, KC Timpf. Follow me, man. I really want 2,000. Spell your last name. T as in Tom, I, M as in Mary, P as in Penguin, F as in Frank. You missed the M, dude. Man. (laughs) (laughs) Scratch that. Scratch that. I'm watching Colbert. Colbert's on. Colbert's on right now. All right. K, T as in Tom, I, I didn't miss it. I said M as in Mary. P as in Penguin, F as in Frank. Oh. And you can follow me at Jessica Chasmar. Because you need more followers. <laughs> right? And we are airing every Tuesday night at BreakingBeltway.com. 7 p.m. That's yep. it for this week, but you can catch us next week, same time, same place. Yeah, we're going to have my co-worker Douglas Ernst on next week to talk about all sorts of man-centric topics. Man so you guys things. are definitely going to want to Even manlier that. things than we talk about. Yes. <laughs> All right, that's it. See you guys next week. Uh.